YouTube, it's Chris. Welcome back. In my last video, I talked about capture cards adding input lag. And in this video, it's going to be a tutorial on how to use OBS with game capture to either use full screen projector mode or OBS NDI. Now I prefer and recommend OBS NDI to alleviate that issue and to use a dual PC setup without any added extra input lag. So this is more or less sort of a, a basic OBS tutorial on how to set up OBS really, really basic. So it doesn't uh, tank too many frames and you can get your image that um, from your game or your desktop over to the streaming PC without any ad adding any extra input lag and without buying a really, really expensive capture card. Okay, so there's two options. We can use full screen projector mode or OBS NDI. Now I highly recommend OBS NDI because there are issues with dual monitors, and different refresh rates with Windows. And what happens is full screen projector mode will randomly drop frames and there's nothing you can do to fix that. It's a Windows issue. So I highly recommend OBS NDI. But for the purposes of this video, and like I said in the last video, I was going to do a tutorial and show you guys how to set this up. So let's start from scratch. Going to download the latest OBS. We'll go ahead and download that now. We're going to download OBS NDI, which is a plugin. We need to grab the plugin for the Windows installer. Okay, we'll go ahead and download that now. And we also need to grab the, so click releases, go down here to the NDI runtime. We're gonna need both of those. So you should have three installers, OBS, OBS NDI plugin, and the NDI runtime. Go ahead and run and install those. I'd recommend installing OBS first, installing OBS now. We won't launch OBS yet. We'll go ahead and install the plugin. Go and install that. It'll install in the default location, which is where you want it. If you're using a portable version of OBS, you'll need to figure that out. And then you'll want to run OBS, uh, go ahead and install the runtime installer. Now that's installed, I'd highly recommend restarting the PC. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, I've restarted the PC. Let's open up OBS right here. Okay, don't worry about any of this, just press cancel. We can set up everything manually. We want a really, really basic OBS on our game PC, so we're not going to drop or lose any frames. So what I like to do is I like to get rid of a lot of stuff here. I don't want status bar. I don't want source icons. I don't want source toolbar. I don't want scene source list buttons at all. I want a really, really basic setup here. I also want to get rid of scene transitions because I'm not using that want to get rid of audio mixer now if you are using audio to pass through you may need to muck around with this but i'm using a go xlr mini which i can hear audio from both pcs but some of you guys might need to set this up a little bit but for the purposes of this video um, we're just doing the obs video part so i'm going to remove that i'm only going to be using one scene so i can get rid of the scenes i'm only going to basically be using sources I'm going to get rid of controls because I want a really basic setup. If I need to go into the controls, I can just go file and settings. If I need to touch anything there. I'd also highly recommend using stats. So go ahead and grab stats and I'll drag this in here. I just want to make sure that we have no issues. It's a really handy tab to have. We want to make sure that we're getting no sort of frame drops, uh, whether it be something wrong with the gaming PC. So it's just really handy to have this and let this log. And if there's an issue, you can come back and check it. All right, let's go into the file and the settings page. Start with advanced. Don't change the priority, just leave it as normal, okay? And don't change any of this because you'll make your image look fairly messed up, all right? We want to keep things pretty simple and minimalistic. Now, we don't need to worry about reconnecting or anything like that. We're not using any of this. We're just using OBS purely for NDI or full screen projector mode. I would highly recommend disabling browser source hardware acceleration because we just don't want anything to tank performance of frames on our gaming PC. Now for the way I'm setting this up, I'm not going to need any hotkeys. So I'm going to select this to disable hotkeys when main windows is not in focus. Some of you may want to set up hotkeys for something, but that's up to you. I have no hotkeys here. Video, we need to make sure that we're matching the resolution that we're actually using on the gaming PC. So I'm on 1440p and I also want the output scale to be 1440p as well. And I want the FPS value to be 60, okay? Maybe I'd change this value if you're after like a higher stream. I don't know how much bandwidth that is going to use with NDI, so just be wary of that. But that's all done in this tab. I'd highly recommend just sticking with 60 anyway because you're not going to really benefit from uploading higher FPS values for YouTube videos or Twitch streaming or anything like that. 
audio i'm actually not using audio to pass through so i'm going to actually disable it here some of you guys that don't have a go xlr or anything like that or a, a device that you can get audio across and you know some of you might use be using hdmi to get audio across that's not part of this video um so i'm just disabling all of that okay and i'm going to hit apply I'm going to go to the output tab. We're basically not using any of this at all. So we don't have to touch it whatsoever. Stream here. We don't need to use any of this, but I'm going to touch it whatsoever. And here, uncheck for updates because if you've got this working fine, I don't want to update it at all. I just want to leave it as it is. Okay. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you never ever want OBS to be shown on the streaming PC, you can simply check this, but I, I do most of the time. So I'm just leaving it. I, this doesn't do anything. I'm not going to be using source alignment. I can just transform fit to screen. So I'll just turn that off. Now we want to set this up. So it's minimized to system tray when started. Okay. We just basically want to automate the process. So when we boot the PC, OBS will be just sitting there chilling there in the taskbar already working. Okay. I don't need any of that to be honest. I don't need any of that either. I'm not using studio mode and I'm not using sort of multi view either. So now if you're using full screen projector mode, um, I'd highly recommend selecting limit to one full screen projector per screen because you're only going to be using one for the purposes of this video. And if you like full screen projector mode, which I still don't recommend, please use OBS NDI. But if you are going to use full screen projector mode, you can hit save projectors on exit. So when you restart the PC, it'll automatically like um, redo it and um, you won't have to constantly right click your sources and go enable full screen projector mode again. It'll just remember where it was last time. That's all the settings done. Okay. What we want to do is we want to go to sources and we want to add game capture. All right. Hit game capture. Now, if you want GeForce overlay or AMD overlay to show up, you will have to check capture third party overlays um, on, but if you're not, you can um, switch that off. I do occasionally like to show um, my NVIDIA overlay for the Lengthy tool um, through game capture. So I have that actually checked. And also you want to hit limit capture frame rate. So it will just roll back to 60 and not use more bandwidth than needed. It'll just use the 60 rather than everything. And that could prevent a lot of issues or frame drops. So make sure you have limit capture frame rate on as well. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's already transformed to the resolution that we were using. But if you ever mess it up accidentally, okay, with the transform, you can simply go right click, transform and fit to screen. All right. And once you've done that, I would recommend locking it so you don't actually accidentally drag it around and mess it up. So game capture is the way to go for capturing the game. You'll only lose 20 frames absolute max and no added input lag. We also want to add desktop capture here. Um, which we'll call this in here, display capture. Okay, just call it desktop capture, display capture. So we can get the desktop occasionally. And we would want to capture the cursor because occasionally you want uh, OBS on the streaming piece if you'll be able to see um, the actual desktop itself. Now the transform is already done, but just a friendly reminder, if it gets messed up, just right click, go transform, fit to screen. Once you've done that, lock it so you can't accidentally do that again. And we want to uncheck display capture and we can toggle this on and off. Now, when it's off, it won't actually be working, but I really, really, really highly recommend to not use display capture for capturing the game. You will use a, lose 100 frames in a GPU bound scenario and it adds a lot of input lag. You want to use game capture. There are other NDI tools out there that you can use instead of this, but they don't allow for the game capture option. That's why OBS NDI is end game with game capture. Now to use full screen projector mode, what you'll need to do is you need to have your display. So you can either do it in Windows um, if you have an AMD card or you can do it in NVIDIA. If you have an NVIDIA card, the NVIDIA control panel, we want extended displays um, and we ideally it would probably look like this roughly. So you would have your capture card sort of on the right and your gaming monitor on the left. Now the capture card itself, I would highly recommend putting out of the way so you don't actually accidentally drag your um you know your mouse cursor and completely lose it on the capture card monitor right so i'll just drag this down out of the way you could put it here 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 or here it's just so you don't accidentally lose the mouse at some stage so you just put it like that and hit apply now on obs on your streaming pc you're just going to see it as another desktop so you'll have to go to the sources right click go full screen projector source and then select the capture card so now you should actually be able to see it. 
So you should be able to see it now. Currently I have display capture on, but you would actually want to set this to, it adds basically a little window here, which is your full screen projector. So it grabs everything that OBS sees over to the capture card, right? Just there. Now I don't recommend this method whatsoever. There's a couple of different ways you could do it. So you could turn it on and off. So you could just to turn it off, you could simply close it. And then to, to turn it back on, you'd obviously just full screen projector source, right click. So it's right click, full screen projector source, and then Elgato, okay? Now, you could toggle that on and off, so obviously we're using display capture now. We wouldn't want to while we were gaming. We would wanna turn that off, close that, and then do it for game capture, all right? That's how to do that. Now, if you occasionally switch between the two, we could always go back to enable scenes, and we could just do it for the scene instead. So I'll do it for the scene now instead. I'm right clicking scene, going full screen projector scene and pressing the Elgato. So it's right here. See scene, full screen projector, scene and Elgato. So you might want to do it with a scene instead. So you can simply toggle this on and off. As you can see here, I'm able to toggle it on and off. So that way you can just alt tab to OBS and toggle it on and off. Now, technically you could make another scene and a shortcut. And one scene could be display capture, the other scene could be game capture. But I'm always very paranoid that I might accidentally leave display capture on and lose frames. So I just sort of like to do it this way. But it's up to you. You can basically full screen projector um, source anything if you like, right? Full screen projector source, full screen projector scene. It's all pretty much the same thing. Now here's where it gets really, really important. You guys need to not skip this step. In your NVIDIA control panel or AMD control panel, make sure you either have vertical sync set to 3D application or on. If you tend to not use VSync at all, just put it to um, 3D application setting and off in game. Or if you have it off like me sometimes, you could go into program settings. Go ahead and add. You'd add OBS Studio and you could force VSync on completely. So that way, you know, it doesn't matter what you have in global settings at least. Because if you don't have VSync on for OBS, you will get tearing. Now in the AMD control panel, you might just want to set it to use 3D application setting and then just have it off in game if you don't use it. That way it'll be on for OBS. But this step is really important because you will get screen tearing if you don't have this set. Now for me, like I said, I've got it set in program settings individually, just so I never have to worry about this. Now back to talking about full screen projector mode. I really don't recommend this because there are issues with dual monitors in Windows and I guarantee you in your stream or your recordings, occasionally you're going to get drops. It's just how it is. Dual monitors with different refresh rates, there are issues. Now, technically speaking, if you have a 14, let's say I had a 1440p 360 and then the Elgato, uh, was able to do 1440p 360. I'd be using pass through, but say I wasn't, and you were to use full screen projector mode and they're both the same refresh rate, you probably wouldn't have this issue with full screen projector mode, but most of you aren't going to have that. And if you were, you would probably use pass through. But the whole point of this video is to use OBS NDI. You don't have to worry about the random frame drops with full screen projector mode, and you don't have to buy a really expensive capture card. So let's show you how to use OBS NDI now. For OBS NDI, really, really straightforward. Just go to Tools, go to OBS NDI Output Settings. You're not going to need Tally. You're just going to need Main Output. I would name it to something familiar. So I'll call mine OBS Game PC. All right, and then I just hit OK. Once that's on, it'll already be doing its thing. So if you were to change any settings, you'll have to turn it back off because it says Video Output is currently active. So if I turn it back off by unchecking my main output, now I have the option of changing the settings in here. Okay, so just letting you guys know. So tool, OBS NDI settings, main output, and then okay. Now on your stream PC, all you need to do is right click in sources, go add. Okay, and ideally you would have installed the same plugins on your streaming PC as well. Okay, you would go to NDI source. Okay, now I've already added one, so you would add one. And I've named mine to Game PC NDI. Okay, so once you've done that, it should actually pop up in here. See how it's popped up in here? OBS Game PC, right? And generally speaking, I'd recommend the default default settings 
um, if you are passing through audio, you may need to enable audio. Now that should be picked up as you can see here. We've got the image coming through. If I go to task manager, you should see, be able to see it'd be using your local network bandwidth. Okay. If it's not picking it up, you're going to have want to have both PCs plugged into ideally the same router with an ethernet cable for both individually. Do not use Wi-Fi because you'll probably have interrupt issues. It would be a bit of a mess. So obviously ethernet for both PCs. So we're back on the game PC desktop. It's pretty straightforward. It's already set up. Okay. We already have it on and the game PC is already picking it up, which is perfect. Now in a game, it may actually use quite a lot of bandwidth, just a heads up. So you want to make sure you have got a fairly good router. And like I said before, repeating myself here, make sure you have it on ethernet. See it's using quite a lot of bandwidth. That's the most I've ever seen it use. So just a heads up there. It's generally speaking lossless, so it looks quite good. And I was actually able to do 4K 60, no issues as well. So you guys should have no issues there too, as long as both PCs have ethernet and you're connected to you know the same router ideally. They should pick each other up. Now I have it set like this where I will just toggle off desktop capture, display capture so it's turned off so I don't lose any frames. And then I can just toggle this on and off if I want to do a YouTube video or something like that. Um, anything on the desktop if that makes sense. Now what I like to do is I like to set OBS to run on startup. So I'll uh, simply just put a shortcut of OBS Studio into my startup folder. So you guys can find the startup folder here, I'll have to, sorry, apologies about that. You guys should be able to see right now. There we go. So the startup folder here, I like to put a shortcut of OBS in the startup folder. This is the startup location and this will be your PC name. So you may need to change your PC name here. And that's a great way I get it to open on startup. So it already minimizes on close on startup. So I don't even need to think about it. It's already there and set up. All I have to ever think about is whether to toggle on and off display capture. It's pretty straightforward. Another thing I should probably mention in this video too is ideally open file location of OBS Studio just to prevent any issues. Go to properties of the actual OBS64.exe, the original location, go to compatibility and turn on administrator um, to for that program just so you have no issues. There has been some issues with OBS in the past if it wasn't running as administrator. And another thing I should mention too is, is HAGS. Um, not so much of an issue anymore, but um, a lot of people have had frame drops with HAGS and OBS, doesn't mix very well together. I believe they've fixed that now, but I actually leave HAGS off because I actually get about 10 more frames in Battlefield and Call of Duty with this off. And I've seen the same thing on a lot of other PC configs. So just turn that off anyway, just to be safe. That's pretty much it. That should get you guys out of trouble. Also, before I go like some um, other handy tips, if you use MSI Afterburner, and you would like the overlay to show over your game, just go to setup and then check on use Microsoft Detours API hooking. That way, way the game capture will actually be able to see um, your OBS, sorry, OBS game capture will actually be able to see your MSI Afterburner overlay config. Um, and another really, really important step that I'm leaving last is make sure you disable preview mode, okay? Because preview mode, um, Basically, you can see everything that's happening here and it adds quite a bit of CPU usage, especially if you that don't have the greatest of PCs. It's, it's only saying 2.2% now, but trust me, when you've got a game running there and it's just like there rendering all of that, um, it's not a good thing. So I highly recommend right click just anywhere here and disable preview by unchecking that. That is probably one of the most important steps in this video um, to keep that CPU usage as low as possible and um, GPU usage in uh, throughout OBS. Also, another last thing that's really, 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 really important, I'm gonna have to add on into this video when I edit it, um, passing your image over through NDI, through local LAN network to your streaming PC, um, adds a bit of delay um, as far as when you're capturing audio so on the on the stream pc so not not delay that you have but basically if you're using a go xlr like myself or any other audio device to get audio across um this will affect you um if you're passing through your audio through ndi this probably won't be an issue but if you are passing only your video through ndi but not your audio there will be a delay difference and I've measured it, it's about 240 milliseconds. So what you actually have to do 
um you can measure it yourself i'll just add this is my streaming pc okay um in the audio tab in advanced audio properties i've had to set an audio offset on my gaming pc volume at 240. so if you're not passing audio through ndi like me you will have to figure out this and set this otherwise your audio will be out of sync with the video okay and that's really frustrating um, now, thankfully, this is probably the best tutorial I've found on YouTube that was really helpful thanks to StreamGeeks. Basically, he has a little video that you can use to fix this. It's just in the Dropbox file and I will link this in the description, okay? I'd recommend downloading the file, playing the file through a decent uh, media program and recording that on your streaming PC and then open that recording in an editing software, slowing it down and trying to find roughly the offset and then re-record it and do it again. Um, you can look at that tutorial if you like, but here's an example of the testing tool. Okay, so I do a recording of it without the offset. Then I'll um, open it in the video editing program and then I'll find out what the actual delay is and then I'll set the audio delay um, on OBS, do a re-recording and then figure out um, what the right sync is. So if you get lost, just go back to this video. Um, he covers most of that there, but that's another issue that I had with NDI when I wasn't passing audio over through NDI. OBS NDI is endgame. Please check out my last video, uh, but this is basically a complete summary of why config3 is the way to go. Um, thanks Windows for making life so difficult with full screen projector mode and dual displays at different refresh rates and cloning displays. It's a bit of a nightmare, but um, now sort of I've sort of rediscovered this. I've never been happy with how my reef has run before. Things feel so much better in smooth. So I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe, like, share around. I have an optimization service over on Twitter if you're interested. Go check out the links in the description. I can also set all of this up for you if you're interested in one of those appointments. So guys, take it easy. Thank you.